Hello everyone and welcome back. As of Wednesday, the 16th of August, Bungie have released a quick Dev Insight blog going over the number of buffs, nerfs and changes that will be coming once Season 22 arrives. In said blog post, they have stated that Touch of Malice is finally getting a buff to make it feel more welcoming to the user. If you are a user who has the following weapon but never gave it a try, here's why you should be hyped for it. The Touch of Malice is a strong weapon, but the user base for the gun was stated to be too low in any content where it mattered the most, Bungie said. This was due in large part to how easy it was to unintentionally kill yourself, which when you look at it using it for any game, it just wasn't feasible at all. Bungie stated that upon bringing back the weapon, they increased the amount of self damage the final round did to the user because there are far more ways to self heal in Destiny 2 compared to 1, but they soon realised they went too far. To fix the weapon, they have come up with a number of buffs that they believe best fits the weapon. Decrease the self damage from final round from 10 to 7. Final round damage can no longer kill the user. Increase the health rewarded by the Touch of Mercy perk from 30 to 75. Set up Touch of Mercy to work like unrelenting. Guardians and Matrix Battens give more points towards activation. And we increase the time allowed between kills. And Ball of Darkness now appropriately deals arc damage and will blind combatants and stun unstoppable champions. In the eyes of many players, the most biggest pro to this is how the weapon will not kill the user when on the final round, as this here ultimately made the weapon unusable in higher end game content. This of course does not mean that players won't die still, as all it would do is reduce your health down to just 1 HP instead. However, this makes it easier to use the weapon without needing to fully use specifically designed builds to keep its damage bonus going. It's still going to be strong when paired with Void Devourer or Solar Cure builds, which in fact is what I would recommend players to aim for. It's just now you have a bit more freedom to it. This also links back into the Touch of Mercy effect giving users a much bigger health regen upon activation, as a 30 HP being rewarded felt pitiful considering how fast you lose your health. Now though, with health reduction being taken down to 7 instead, you will have enough health regen given back to you before you even reach 1 HP. That's huge in my books. Lastly, Ball of Darkness getting buffed also makes this exotic effect more compelling to use on and off. Its effect for stunning targets is noticeable, but not huge in the grand scheme of the weapon. With this now, at least the damage it would do would be more noticeable against arc shielded targets and make it usable against unstoppables is both ballsy but flexible with the right setup. It's not something I would use since Unstoppables have a short stun rate, but it does get me interested in seeing how effective it could be in endgame content now. Now this all sounds great coming from Bungie, but what about the build you can make out of this? Well, just from using the weapon alone, the best way to maximize the exotic is to build into health regen setups. I have done a previous build before using Sanguine's Alchemy Rift Effect and avoid with non-stop devour to create an easy to use final round build. With it, you can stay in your wrist for however long you want it, and then you can make full use of the devour to heal while you are firing literally non-stop. It's such a fun idea that it is usable to use in endgame content such as Master, Legend and above, as long as you knew what you were doing and you stayed vigilant to your surrounding. Another possible build that could have been done would be to use Press of Scars, Phoenix Cradle, and Boots of the Assembler with Solar and Void subclass. Precious Scars will constantly shoot out a wave of healing upon kills, while Phoenix Cradle extends the time of Soul Invictus. Using the two with Solar Soul Invictus or Void Devourer means that healing will never be so much of an issue, which you can then invest the rest into damage. A boost to the Assembler is a wild card exotic that can be used however you like, but considering how the whole setup is range based, I can definitely see this being a huge benefactor with buffing your teammates easily or from a safe distance. Overall, this is going to be an interesting update for the following weapon, as we have never seen this weapon become popular in Destiny's entire world. Hopefully, the buff will be very noticeable and fun to use for those who have been itching to use the weapon for a very long time, as honestly, this is one weapon that has such an interesting perk to it, it's just as downside to it makes it not worth the while to use. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the video breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content share, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. 
It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.